locate. Fiona definitely had a dream of a shopping buddy, that's, that's for sure. The um, sonographer told us that unfortunately there was a problem with Kate's heart and at that time the cardiologist told us that her condition was repairable. After she was born she didn't attach, she couldn't suck, swallow, breathe, that whole kind of automotive process just wasn't there. That's when it was starting to hit home how bad it could be. He doesn't have the, the strength to, to feed, swallow. So he's fed into his, um, into his bowel. He's got respiratory issues, so um, at the moment we're giving him physio chest physio twice a day and he gets Ventolin twice a day and, and nebulised twice a day and then there's medication in the morning, medication at night. There's times where we were feeding Tom and he was having absent seizures and we were trying to feed him. Like you're putting the milk into his mouth and it's just going down his throat, he's not swallowing it or sucking it and it just, it's just tripped into his lungs um, and he stopped breathing. Natalie came in running saying he's blue, he's blue, he's not breathing um, and I just remember saying it's okay, it's okay, he'll be okay, again still trying to be optimistic and then I looked at him and he was dead, he was, he was like a rag doll, he was limp, he was blue, he was clinically dead for 10 minutes. And at that point we were told, you could have five months, you could have five years. When you're looking after her at home, mm. you have um, a number of, you know, several alarms that could go off at night, and they did, they all went off. So we would be lucky to get an hour's sleep. You know, it could be any night that the seizure meds weren't working for whatever reason, and we'd be off and back to the hospital was sort of a, a very uncertain life. I mean, Tom went on to, he would stop breathing on, you know, me at home, just like that, he'd just go blue. The first two years, we really didn't sleep at all, and I think that's when we hit breaking point. You're just trying to keep your head above water yeah. and learn about care. You become a, a, a carer, I guess, and a, and a nurse to your child. Something Kate and I used to enjoy was watching the football on a Friday night. Um, she's just to snuggle up in my arm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Kate. I always knew that it was ridiculous the amount of clothes she had. She could never wear that many clothes, but um, I always thought, well, there's going to be a day where I'm not going to be able to buy them anymore. CPR had been going for about 15 minutes, so we had no heart rate, no oxygen intake for 15 minutes. What do you say? You know, I love you and goodbye. One of those things that you just never think you're going to have to face. No mother should lose their child, it's not normal.
he doesn't give up. He really wants to be here and he's trying and trying and trying. You know, he wants to walk, he wants to live. There's a whole disability world out there that unless you've um, been touched by it, you, you really don't know it exists. And it is, it's an amazing world. It's amazing what a, a disabled child can bring to you um, and what you learn from it. Um, it makes you a much stronger person. To know that there was somewhere like that here in Queensland will change everything. Queensland families like ours need Hummingbird House.